Good morning, everyone. Our call to worship this morning is from the book of Psalms, the 96th Psalm, verses 11 through 13, and that's found on page 540. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all it contains. Let the field exult, and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Amen. Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday you've given us. Every Sunday is beautiful because it's your day, the Lord's day. Today especially, it's beautiful outside. We do rejoice because we get to live another day in your grace. And we pray for all. Everyone here, we pray for all of our loved ones to know you, to know your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, church. Uh, Lord bless you for being here uh, this hour, this day. Uh, Especially if you made it to the dinner last night. Uh, I know that uh, I'm tired. I'm sure some of you folks are too. Uh, I promise you I won't preach real long this morning, okay? Uh, Let me see. Please turn off your cell phones if you haven't done so already. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, Any first-time visitors? Uh, Rose, uh, who who are the visitors with you? This is uh, my mother's grandson. Oh. And I'm her daughter, Cindy. Cindy, have I met, I met you before, oh, yeah, Cindy? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Awesome. All right. God bless you for being here. And uh, Esther, you have a friend with you? Yes, my friend's mom. Okay. My friend's mom. Um, she's visiting from Canada. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, God bless you. Okay, God bless you. So, okay, very, 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 very quickly. Um, we're in the book of James on... Uh, Wednesday nights and um, just starting the, the book. So uh, we're in the first chapter. We encourage you to that time. Uh, if you, I know lot, lot, uh, there's a lot going on. People have very, very busy schedules, but encourage you to that time. Uh, we have choir practice uh, this coming Saturday morning at 9.30. Um, the Lord bless uh, you folks who sing in the choir uh, to bless our hearts. We appreciate that. Also, uh, after church today, uh, we have coffee slash mashed potato hour. (laughs) Now, Janelle put that in the bulletin because there's a little backstory to this, but Liz, Liz, uh, for the supper, um, bought 10 less pounds and yet seems to have at least 10 more pounds left over. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, I saw it stacked up last night, folks. So, if nothing else, coffee and mashed potatoes, okay? (laughs) Try it, you'll like it. Oh my goodness. Uh, Anyway, no, so um, please, um, uh, if you, uh, as I said to somebody this morning, if you can't join with us after church and stay, at least stop in and grab a plate of mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay, just grab something. There's a lot of dessert left too, right? Okay. All right, and um, definitely want to thank uh, everyone who volunteered, who had any little part in making last evening possible. Whether you invited people, whether you prayed that people would come, um, whether you brought a pie, uh, whether you're part of the cleanup setup crew set down crew, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I was thinking last night as I went home, uh, Christ makes all things possible. And, uh, and you know, from the littlest to the greatest thing, and, and in terms of what people do and how they serve, and it's just a wonderful blessing. So uh, thank you for that. Also, speaking of uh, harvest suppers and turkey and all that, uh, the Rainham Food Basket is offering Thanksgiving baskets to members of our congregation if you think that you are able to benefit from that. And um, so 
we have several people already that are um, receiving a basket. Uh, a lot of times people, you know, think, well, you know, I, I could really use it, but I don't want to be c categorized as needy or, gee, you know, I, I, maybe I feel guilty for taking the food. Look, that, that food pantry is subsidized by your taxes, okay? We're tied into the Rainham Food Bank with that. It's a community-run program. They don't pay rent. They help with some of the utilities. But they, they service at least 175 families in Rainham, right? A bedroom community between Providence and Boston and yet serving people because there's needs, all right? Uh, so if you think you can benefit, please don't feel guilty. It's a courtesy and a service to our church. They don't pay rent. We're glad to have them. And it's been going over for over 30 some years now with the pantry and it's been a very, very blessed relationship. So please see me uh, again if you can benefit from something like that. And um, I guess that's all I have. Um, anything else? Any other announcements this morning? No announcements. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Very good. Well, let's, um, let's move on with our service. Uh, Bob, you'll lead us in our next song, please.
Our tithes and offering verse this morning is from the 16th Psalm, verses 5 to 6. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You support my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. Heavenly Father, bless our offering into your word today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. So as I um, indicated a little bit earlier, uh, I'm tired this morning. I'm sure you are too. I'm not going to do a pastoral prayer. Wouldn't it be really bad looking if I fell asleep as I was praying? <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to open it up to a time of prayer, a season of prayer. Before we do that, uh, is there anyone or anything uh, on your heart and your mind this morning? Anything. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi, Paula. Um, we've been praying here for my grandson, Luke, so he can learn. Yes. He has no problems with the vowels now. He wanted a different one. I said it was called a consonant. And he said yes. I said yes. So we're making progress. Good. Excellent. Excellent. You know, when you first mentioned Luke at prayer meeting on a Wednesday night, I thought of Moses, and, you know, look at, look at Moses. You know, Moses wasn't the most elegant, but, and he had some issues, but, as we all do, but uh, God used Moses greatly, and uh, uh, that's my prayer for Luke. So. Thank you. Hi, Edie. I want to pray for my sister and my husband. <coughs> recently got discharged from the hospital with 30% uh, 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 vessels to his heart. And they don't expect him to live, so. Okay, so Dwight uh, has um, a heart... Sister, sister. Oh, I'm sorry, your, your sister's husband. Oh, it's Paul. Paul. Oh, Paul, okay. Yeah. Very, okay, thank you. Thank you. I apologize for that. Okay. Dwight's going through the treatments, but with not a problem. Right. Right. Okay. All right, Paul. Okay. Israel. On my heart and mind. Uh, Mim said to me last week she's burdened 
Uh, I am too, uh, with all the stuff that's going on. But uh, God's got Israel, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't pray for her. No. Any, 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 anyone else? Anything else? Yeah. Hi, Janice. Janice. Um. Right. I appreciate that. So if you can hear that Janice's daughter is having a hysterectomy uh, sometime this month on the 20th, and then uh, her husband's going in for a back procedure, uh, basically to glue some vertebrae together and uh, pray for Jerry's salvation. He's a Jerry, too. So anyway. And somebody else over here, had uh, somebody else is going to say something? No, I was just saying we should pray for our country also. Amen to that. Yeah, amen to that. Okay, uh, that's enough. If anything else uh, the Lord brings to your mind, I trust that you'll pray about it. Pray as you feel led, and I'll close our time. to that.
closer to you and keep you above, yes, even every earthly relationship that we have in our lives. Amen. For only when you are our priority can our relationships flourish. And I pray that we will be beings of light and even hope to others, Father, that they would feel their emptiness within, no matter the abundance of material things that they may have, and just see even the chaos in this world and know that it is wrong and that there is something better that awaits them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord, we know that even in the midst of pain and great uncertainty, insecurity, uh, feelings of loss and sometimes hopelessness, that you can come in and you can, you can bless us. <laughs> in the midst of all things, you can come in and you can bless us. And I ask that for all people in Israel right now, in Gaza, that uh, in spite of everything, that they will see your blessings somehow and be touched by you and be encouraged. Then we'll be able to encourage and support one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you as a church, as a family of God, for your love towards us and towards mankind. Mm. We thank you for the human race all over the world, in countries that are yet to recognize you as God, and even in countries that some does know you but do not believe in you. Lord, we just want to say thank you that your mercy is on to the good and the bad. Your mercy is on to everyone, not left behind. Lord, we trust in your love this moment. That is why we can come into your presence. Mm -hmm. Your love that you demonstrated by sending us Jesus Christ to save us from our sin to deliver us from the wickedness, O oh Lord, that is in our heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are the one, the only Messiah, the Savior of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did not hold back. You did not deny us this salvation. Thank you for it. Thank you for suffering on our behalf. Thank you for even when you knew that most of us will still turn back from you after receiving you, you still went and ahead to die for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for every love that you have shared over on that cross. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you because no matter the language that we speak, how we look like, what we believe in, you still love us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In this light, we ask for mercies, O God. Mm -hmm. Mercies and forgiveness upon all mankind, upon the human race. Please forgive us, forgive our leaders, 
Forgive those that we have chosen to lead and to guide. Those we have chosen to give laws to the nations. Lord, please forgive. Forgive the wickedness of mankind. Forgive the darkness that most of us have embraced, O oh God. Forgive the head of families, the fathers, the mothers. Forgive every decision that they have made that has endangered and enslaved the children. Mm. Lord, please can you forgive. We pray, Lord, that you be merciful this morning. As we are going to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ again mm. and share of this communion, Lord, please make us worthy, Lord. Let not our sin, O oh God, deprive us from the salvation and even the mercies of this communion, we pray. Mm. Lord, we also ask, O oh God, for our loved ones that are sick, O oh Lord. The Bible says that by His stripes we are healed. Lord, we pray that for everyone that has a, a family member that has one sickness or the other, not only in this congregation, Lord, out there, we pray, Lord, for them, that the healing of Christ will find them this morning, O oh God. That they will experience the supernatural power in the name of Jesus, yes. even as their loved ones are praying for them. Lord, we also ask for those that have not given their life to Christ among our family members, Lord. Mm. Lord, you have promised us in your word that you will save us and our family. Lord, we stand upon those promises this morning that any members of our family that is yet to know you will come to the knowledge of Christ. The Spirit of God that convicts man of sin and judgment will find their soul and minister to them. And they will receive, we pray in Jesus' name. Savior, we also remember this morning the children of the world. Some are homeless. Some are handicapped. Some are without privileges, oh God. No chance even to know or hear about Christ. Lord, we pray for these ones, that you be merciful upon these children, that they will not also perish in the darkness that they find themselves, oh God. Lord, be merciful. Lord, we just want to also thank you, God, for this nation that everywhere in the world they believe that they know you. But we that we live in this nation, we see the darkness, oh God. We see the way, oh Lord, that is so difficult for people to embrace you because of the compromise in faith. Lord, we pray that you be merciful upon this nation. Not only this nation, nations of the world. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, all over the world, be merciful, Lord. That people will come to the way, the truth, and the life. That people will embrace you, the only true God. The God that made the heaven and earth. Lord, this is our prayer this morning. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I just want to bring before you Keith Johnson. Mm -hmm. We just continue to pray for his health and well-being and that things would just go smoothly with him transitioning to a rehab center and um, eventually getting to his apartment, Lord. We just pray that you would encourage his heart this very day, Amen. this very moment that he would feel the support and the prayers of his church family. And we also think of Cindy Ellis and um, all that she's going through with her family and uh, both of her parents being ill. And uh, we just pray that you would give her the continued uh, faith and strength that she needs, um, physical and uh, mental and spiritual, to deal with uh, the situation that's just very oppressing on her family right now. In mm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody else?
Heavenly Father, thank you for the, uh, all the prayers that have been lifted up in this place this morning to our God and Savior. And we know, Lord, that there's nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing that's impossible with you, whether it's people going into surgery, uh, needing salvation, having learning disabilities, um, physically recuperating. Uh, Lord, you know everything there is to know about all the suffering and all the people on planet Earth. And yet we um, pray for uh, people in their situations. And we thank you for the uh, divine ministry and prayer of intercession. And we thank you, Lord, that you constantly make intercession for all of your children. And uh, we want to lift up uh, our, our country. Uh, we want to see more people come into the church of the living God, and we want to see uh, people from around the world, whether it's Palestinians or Jewish people or people of all nations. Um, we pray that the gospel message would echo to the ends of the earth and that many, many people would come to faith. Uh, thank you for all the missionaries that, whether it be uh, through satellite uh, or radio, or going into very, very difficult places. We thank you that Christ is being preached and that your word goes forth. And we thank you, Lord, that it never, ever, ever returns void. Uh, Father, I think of the wonderful words uh, the Lord Jesus said, uh, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and lowly and humble in heart, uh, and I will give rest unto your souls. Uh, Lord, uh, minister to our hearts today. Uh, thank you uh, for your presence. And as we sung earlier in our service, uh, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bill. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 19, and that's found on page 922 of the Church Bible. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout all the surrounding district. And he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord.
Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 23 through 25, and that's found on page 866 of the Church Bible. Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. The news about him spread throughout all Syria and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond the Jordan. This too is the gospel of our Lord. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, you would energize uh, the words that you have uh, placed on my heart and what you've placed on my heart with this passage of Scripture and that it would be life and blessing to your people. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, I talked about how tired I, uh, I am this morning. And um, so I didn't fall asleep when we were praying, right? But I have been noted to fall asleep when I've been talking, right? <laughs> just, <laughs> so if that happens, you know, just somebody come up and just push me, okay? <laughs> oh, my. London's Garrick Club uh, was established as a place where actors and men of refinement and education might e uh, meet on equal terms. That's where patrons of drama and professors were brought together and where they would communicate uh, between artists and patrons, right? And, and that club still exists today. Well, a number, many, many years ago, uh, that being said, many, many years ago, at the club one New Year's Eve, a British actor by the name of Frederick Lonsdale was asked by Seymour Hicks another British actor to reconcile with a fellow member. They had a falling out. Uh, they had quarreled in the past and they had never restored the relationship. So New Year's Eve, right? So Hicks says to Lonsdale, you must reconcile, you must. It's very, very unkind to be unfriendly at such a time. Go over now and wish him a happy New Year. So. Lonsdale, feeling, feeling somewhat convicted, slowly but purposely crossed the room and he spoke to his enemy and he said this, I wish you a happy new year, but only one. <laughs> and then he walked away. <laughs> True story. What a guy. You know, so much for... Uh, you know, men of refinement, right? And easy communication. I, you know, I was wondering as I read that, I wonder if he kind of did it in British dramatic fashion. Because <laughs> they, they have a tendency to, you know, do things in dramatic fashion, right? Praise God that the Lord Jesus does not respond to us, his enemies, in that way, right? Thank God for that. Every time someone snubbed him, he rose above it and found the grace and the strength to forgive people. When they spoke harshly to him or disrespected him, he rose above it and found the great, great grace to forgive them. And even, and you know this, as he hung on the cross and they mocked him and they hurled insights, you know, insults against him, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Thank God that he has promoted an attitude of reconciliation. And so, you know, when you think about that, behold the humility of Christ. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely incredible. 
what I want to do, that, and I told you I wasn't going to preach that, that long this morning. What I, what I want to do, uh, and you know, that's, you know what, what is long to me is, it may not be long to you, but I don't know, maybe it's going to be longer. Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, talk to you about the ministry of reconciliation. And when I looked at the words in verses 23 through 25, the Lord simply brought the words, the ministry of reconciliation to my heart and my mind. Take a look at the activity. It's teaching and preaching and divine healing. It's a ministry of reconciliation, folks. And that started as soon as Adam and Eve had sinned in the Lord Jesus, the Lord in the garden had confronted Adam and Eve, and even though he passed judgment and he expelled them, that ministry of reconciliation began in history. And, you know, think about the, the, the teaching, the pro, uh, preaching, and the, it's almost akin to the, somewhat akin to the Great Commission, right? Somewhat akin to it. Before I get to Matthew 4, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, and, and some of you may know this passage of sec, uh, Scripture well, Paul reminded the Corinthians, the Corinthians that God had reconciled the world to himself when Christ died at Calvary. Now, some people will take that as a blanket statement for you know, universal redemption, and that is so far from the truth. You know, every heart, every person is accountable before God Almighty to receive the forgiveness through the gospel of Christ. And, you know, you go back to Exodus, right? You, you had to apply the blood to the household for God to pass over. And every person needs to have a personal uh, encounter and come to a saving knowledge of faith. So this is not a blanket statement, right? But God reconciled the world and created a pathway for forgiveness and reconciliation. Paul also reminded that church in the same chapter that he has given the church the ministry of reconciliation. That is so precious. And, at verse 18, and in verse 19, he has committed that ministry of reconciliation to the church. And the difference between the two is this. You can give me something, and I can do nothing with it. Or you can give me something, and I can do a lot with it. And so when he has committed the ministry of reconciliation to us, it implies responsibility and to properly communicate the gospel of Christ. And then in, and then, uh, in verse 20, Paul talks about how we're ambassadors for Christ. And so the church has the word of God and the ministry of reconciliation. And you folks know that it's a blessed word. Uh, it's a message of eternal life and liberty and eternal happiness. At the, Psalm 16, at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. And we would certainly want that for every person on planet earth. Uh, our prayers here this morning seem to indicate that. And it's a message of reconciliation with God. Uh, where the lost is found, the sinner becomes a saint. You don't have to wait to be canonized by the church. Where the enemy of God becomes a friend of God. And where one's destiny goes from hell to heaven. That's, that's, that's an amazing savior, is it not? And, and it's a blessed message. And, and it's not limited in scope. We go back to that British actor... You know, you talk about the human heart, very limited in scope. And, and, and yet, you know, God's scope is not limited whatsoever, right? As high as, as high as the sky, and the sky goes on forever, as my kids used to say. And so, we, so we, we, we come to Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 25. And so Jesus went about teaching and proclaiming the gospel and the good news of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and sickness. And, and that's what I saw. That's the ministry of reconciliation. That's what his life was about. And I would hope that each and every one of us would understand that that responsibility applies to us. You say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, Jesus was doing that. How is it that that applies to me? Uh, I'll, get there, I'll get there in a second. So I, I, I would encourage you to read these verses 
as, as someone who, is, who possesses and is committed to the ministry, ministry of reconciliation, when you run into people that don't believe, you're a minister of reconciliation. And you know, I think a lot of times what we do is we read a passage like that and we separate ourselves from it personally from this activity. You know, we, we limit this activity to Jesus or we apply it to a preacher or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher, right? And I would say to you, don't separate yourself from it. Yet, you know, evangelists and pastors and teachers and preachers, and there's a difference between preachers and pastors. But, you know, that's what we do. We, we teach and we instruct publicly. We preach. And hopefully God uses what we share to bring healing to people's lives. And, and you know, maybe it's not physical healing. Maybe it's spiritual healing. I, I believe that God heals. I believe that God can heal without me touching somebody or praying for somebody. And, you know, uh, I've heard of stories where God tremendously heals through people in the church. I don't discount that. But maybe it's not God's will for physical healing. But any time we have the ministry of reconciliation, it's always spiritual healing. And, and, and so I would say to you, the church this morning, you too have the ministry of reconciliation. And there are times where you're going to find yourselves sharing scriptures and sharing the hope that is within you. And what you will have to do at times, maybe you're not going to be officially teaching, but you're going to be instructing people as to what that scripture means. And how many times have you found yourself where you're sharing a scripture and you're explaining to that person what that means, right? And in a sense, you are proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Now, it, you know, it may not be a public venue like this. It may not be on a street corner. But when you're, you, you might have a private venue one-on-one, -on -one, and that is so precious. You know, I, I have found in public situations, there's almost sometimes very, very limited uh, with what you can do uh, or what, how God might use you on, uh, in, with a, getting to a person's heart. But when you're one-on-one, -on -one, Oh, man, that's like kneading bread, you know? And it's amazing how God will give you tremendous insight. You know, when I used to work at the post office, when I started to publicly share Christ, they were like a bunch of wolves. They would wolf pack on me. But when I would get them one-on-one, -on -one, boy, they melted like wax, right? And so one-on-one -on -one is so, so precious. So, so precious. And, and, and so when, when we're sharing our faith, by, or you're sharing your faith, by extension... You're instructing, and you're proclaiming, and you're serving up a ministry of healing. I think we forget that. Uh, we're all one in Christ. We're all the same body. We have different roles, and we have different functions. But we're all believer priests, and we're all ministers. And, you know, in our culture today, we separate clergy and congregation. But that's not how the Scripture does it. If, if you're in Christ... You're, you're of Christ, and you're a minister of Christ. You're a servant of Christ. It's the same words. Minister and servant, same words, you see? And so uh, we're in service to God. And, you know, uh, are, are pastors and ministers and preachers the only ones that have the ministry of reconciliation? I hope not. Are we the only ones uh, in the church that are ambassadors for Christ? I hope not. Paul teaches... In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, read it, that the church has the ministry of reconciliation. And, and so you're ambassadors for Christ just as much as I am. And you have been committed to the ministry of reconciliation just as much as that is that been committed to me. And so therefore, you are, are obligated to share it accurately and concisely. And when you have an opportunity, uh, to speak of the glories of Christ as well, right? It's a responsibility that we all have. Uh, you've been reconciled to Christ, I've been reconciled to Christ, and so therefore, we have the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone in the church is called to share the good news, everyone is called to proclaim the glories of their Savior, and everyone is called to promote the healing power of Jesus. And that's a wonderful one. And I know 
I, I know that when you share, you're very, very blessed. I had, I was blessed this past week, numerous occasions, but one person shared with me how they were sharing the gospel of Christ with somebody in, a, in, in their workplace. Uh, blessed my heart. And they were talking about how the Bible was true. And they were instructing them and encouraging them to read further. And you know what the person said? Yeah, I guess I should read it. Uh, I was talking to Keith the other day, Keith Johnson. Keith Johnson, he, he wanted to come to the Harvest Supper yesterday. He was never let out of the hospital. We were going to bring him. But he said to me, God had divine appointments for the doctors and all the staff that came in because he is talking about the glories of Christ and his Savior, and he's explaining scriptures to them with the hope that they come to a saving knowledge of Christ. That just blesses my heart, folks, right? I shared this message uh, many, many years ago, or shared this example many, many years ago, but I, was, I, I don't know where I was reading the article, but it was, it was, uh, it, it, it was uh, entitled, Pulpits, Pulpits Everywhere. And everyone has a pulpit. And you might not recognize it as a pulpit, but it's an occasion where God gives you great, great grace to share the word of God, to explain it, to proclaim the glories of your Savior, whether it's uh, through scriptures or it's personal testimony. And just step back and just watch what God does with it. It's, it's so, so cool. So, so cool. And so... Uh, I, uh, in closing, I would say to you, remember, we all have the ministry of reconciliation. We're, not, we're all not pastors or preachers or teachers or evangelists. But we are all ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And we have the ministry of reconciliation. And so, as we share here together and we go to our various places and wherever God leads us, we take that message with us with the hope that God will open up doors and hearts. Amen? Anyway, that's what God has laid on my heart uh, this hour, this day. And um, we're going to transition to uh, communion here. And um, look at this. Our, our next hymn is uh, about God opening up our eyes again. Uh, so open our eyes, Lord, is our next song. And it's number uh, 633 in the hymn book. Please stand.